Uh, with the NASDAQ and the S&P closing out this very strong quarter led by technology, how do you position the portfolio on that front? Joining us this morning uh, talking about what Q2 may bring, Satori Fund's Dan Niles. Dan, great to have you back. What? Just let's sure. talk overall how you've processed this sort of swing in sentiment, really, even in just the last three weeks. So we thought the market would bottom. We put out a tweet on March 10th and said, you know, we're covering our shorts. And if you remember, that was the day that Silicon Valley Bank failed because looking back, my general view was over the weekend, the government would do something to backstop this because they'd gone through the Lehman crisis, they'd gone through Washington Mutual, and they would step in over the weekend. And so the market's gone from a low of about 38.10 that following Monday. It's now rallied, obviously, about 250 points or so. And I had an interview with Mike Santoli um, that following Tuesday, March 14th. And I said, look, I think the market can get up to about 4,100 or until earnings start to get reported for the first quarter. And so we're kind of getting into that range. And J.P. Morgan kind of kicks off earnings season on, I think it's April 14th, if I remember correctly. And so I think that's sort of your sell-by date on this rally because when the banks report, you're going to now go from, well, we're focused on financial instability to what are earnings, and earnings are going to have to get cut anywhere between 10 to 20 percent on bank EPS just because you've had deposits rates go up a lot, which squeezes their net interest income margins. And Schwab yesterday is a good, you know, maybe sample set of what could potentially happen where you had Morgan Stanley, who's liked the stock for seven years, downgrade the company and say, hey, net interest margins are going to get hit. They're going to go down by about, they cut their estimates by 30%. And you're like, well, the stock's already down 34% going into this. And it goes down 5% yesterday anyway. And last time I checked, it was down again today. So clearly it's not all in the numbers yet, as much as people desperately want to believe it is. So Dan, have, have you missed this run that we've seen? S&P 500 up for the quarter, 6%. NASDAQ comp, uh, comp up 16 have you been too bearish? No, because <laughs> you may not have heard the answer to the prior question, Sarah, but I said on March 10th, you can look at the tweet, we're covering our shorts for a short-term bounce. And on the 14th, I said with Mike, we think he can get up to 4,100. Right. We're getting close. So we've, we've done very well with this bounce. We've gone from 55% net short before the banking crisis to 5% net short on that following Monday on the 13th. And so we've gotten a good portion of this rally. We're up for the year. We're up last year. We're doing very well. Now we're just looking to add back those shorts. And we've started adding a few. We're back up to about 25% of the portfolio being short, but it's nowhere near the 55 we had going into this. So we got feel it. pretty so good. So that was the part about you thinking the regulators would step in as they did. So so got got that right. And so now, so now Dan, when it comes to adding to the short position and being worried about bank earnings and the, and the risks out there in the system, wh wh what are you targeting? Are you targeting the banks? Are you targeting the big tech companies, which have kind of been going in the opposite direction? Yeah, no, we like, we like a lot of the big tech companies. Obviously, Meta is a name we've liked for a while. We were recommending Intel when people hated it. Obviously, the stock's now up over 20% for the year. Um, so I think it, it, you have to go sector by sector. So we're targeting the banks. That's where we've started adding back a majority of our shorts. We've gone from having no shorts in the banking system in, I think it was like that following Monday on the 13th, to now we've added back a whole bunch of those shorts because earnings are going to matter and people are going to start to preview those. And the bank stocks haven't necessarily discounted the earnings cuts that are potentially coming. Um, we like semiconductors because, you know, we've hated that space for about a year um, some of these companies, I mean, Micron guided to negative gross margins for their upcoming quarter when they reported. The stock was still up 7% a couple of days ago. And so with that space, you've got revenues in some cases that are down over 50% year over year. And so Intel, NVIDIA, those are two names we've mentioned before. We like Facebook a lot. Um, some of the sports betting stuff we like as well, names like DraftKings or FanDuel. And so there are sectors we like, but you have to remember, we've lived through this kind of sort of false rally narrative back in 08, 09, where the S&P rallied 24% in six weeks um, uh, up until January 6th of 09. And everybody's like, oh, the TARP came in at 700 billion, 
everything's good, the worst is behind us, and January 6th is right before the start of earnings season for Q4. Companies reported, guided, and over the next two months, the S&P went down 28%. So earnings do matter. They don't matter in the short term. That's all sentiment that matters. But we're going to have earnings in two weeks, and I think you need to pay attention to that because a lot of these big tech companies, IT spending in general, tech, financial services is the second biggest spender in that $4.4 trillion. They're about 11 to 12%. These banks are not focused on spending money. They're focused on surviving. And so I think a lot of these tech companies and enterprise, you could have an issue with earnings for them as well. Right. Well, that would be interesting. I mean, that, that's actually going to be a very interesting part of the bank uh, earnings rush because I was just a few quarters ago, Dan, we were talking about expenses getting out of control at the largest banks. Absolutely. And so now we've kind of switched to the opposite. And Facebook is a good example of how fast things can change. If you remember, we were on Tech Check back in, I think, November of last year, and Meta had guided to this horrific expense growth. And we were like, well, we like the stock. We're buying it here because they can cut that expenses anytime they want. And then you've had three expense cuts since then. Stocks doubled. Everybody hated it at 90. They love it at 200. You look at the banks, you're sort of in a similar situation, as you pointed out, Carl, where, you know, they've gone from, oh, business looks great, and you've got margins that are expanding, et cetera, to now, oh, my God, I got to worry, can I survive? And so they're going to cut back on all the expenses that they can, and that's going to start flowing through to the companies that supply them. And, you know, they're the second biggest spender besides the tech companies themselves on technology. So there's going to be a lot of very interesting cross currents when these companies report, because, you know, I gave you Micron on the positive side, but you can also yeah. look at Semtech in the semiconductor space yesterday, and the stock was down over 20% when they cut their numbers. So it's going to be very company by company specific, I think, as you go through this. Overall, Dan, the, the move in mega cap tech, I mean, it's been beaten to death now. People understand it pretty well, given uh, what's happened regarding financial stability. But don't you, do you, do you believe that things like AI, structural growth stories are going to be the thing that, that powers it forward more than people expect? Well, remember, there's going to be certain companies that benefit from that. So we like NVIDIA. They're going to be the big winner, obviously, in AI. And you're going to need more powerful microprocessors as well. And Intel's very, very inexpensive. I think the numbers are actually probably going to be okay just because they've been cut so dr draconianly going into this quarter. Um, so I think those pockets are pretty good. But if you, switch, if you step back from that and you say, well, what's going to happen with some of the networking stuff that goes into big enterprises, what's going to happen with, you know, calm, industrial, some of the other stuff, then it gets a lot more tricky. Auto's been a space that's been really, really strong. But if you're going into a recession, lending standards have obviously gone up over a percent. Auto delinquencies are at the highest levels now at, since, I think, 2006, I want to say. Credit card delinquencies are starting to rise. So you're starting to see some pressure on the consumer. And he's going to run out of that excess savings. It's down to about $1.5 trillion in excess savings from all the checks, stimulus checks during the pandemic. At this rate, it's going to be gone by the end of this year. And that's why we sort of still are thinking the back half of this year could be somewhat problematic from an earnings standpoint versus the yeah. multiple movement that we've seen earlier. Well, I remember it was a, a few quarters ago where you said the, the labor market's not going to crack until you see small and medium-sized businesses lay off. And the argument's now being made that, well, that's where the, the tightening and lending will happen the, the fiercest. And maybe that, maybe that is a, a back half story. Uh, Dan, thanks, as always. Good to see you. Happy Friday. Dan Niles.